Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Hello, hello, everybody. Good evening. So uh, we are today on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. But I have some good news because stream, StreamYard now is enabling Instagram. So next time we will be on four channels. I need to figure out how to buy, you know, upgrade because it allows only th three channels. My, you know. Uh, my program, but I, I'll make sure that I will upgrade it for four channels, so we will be in on Instagram. So if you be so kind and put on the on the comments that you can hear us and see us, that would be that would be great. Yeah, we have uh, Nika from uh, from Finland on YouTube. Uh, our somebody, our number one fan and friend. From, uh, <laughs> from LinkedIn and Facebook, if you can, you know, put there. Uh, I have to say, Jan, I understand there might be a lot of people who can't join us live today because it's so close to Christmas. We're trying to jam in all those last yes. minute present buying, finishing up work before we go on holidays. Yeah. But I know so, yeah. even for people who don't join us live, they will surely be watching the replay because this is the hot topic that everyone wants to talk about at the end of the Absolutely. year, right? Oh. <laughs> Now it's uh, there are more and more people coming in because it's taking you know some time. If you are broadcasting in more channels, it's taking you know the connection is taking more time. I think we can start now, Lisa. If you can yeah. kick it off, I have I'm... then some interesting poll from you know Forbes. Uh, they were running what are the what are the most favorite you know New Year's resolution for 2024 okay. around the world. <laughs> I'll share it with you and then we yes. Can I can't wait. And then I can't wait to bash them because I want to say down with resolution. So let me start by kicking it off by saying it is the end of 2023. How did we do this? How did we get to the end of another year? Well, remember there was COVID-19. There was sort of a time warp. We lost a few years. And this was sort of the first year where we came back and had something of what was the new normal. So 2023 is the year that we start getting back on track. And it's very important at the end of every year that we're going to talk about not only how do we want to go into the next year, but we want to finish this year strong. So today I'm going to give some tips about how to reflect on last year, how to you know finish strong. We still have a little bit of time left. But also why everyone joined us here today is because how do we make 2024 the best year yet? People often ask me to say, how can you know, Lisa, that 2024 is going to be your best year? You don't know what's going to happen. And I say, wrong, because I'm the creator of my year or my life. I can't control what happens outside, but I can make sure that I set myself up for success so that 2024 is going to be a great year. And so we're going to talk today about how can you actually set it up? How can you make sure that you can guarantee 2024 is going to be a good year for you? So, Jan, I want to kick it off for, with you, actually, first, just to, um, just to know a little bit. How was your 2023 and what are you looking forward to in 2024? Okay. So I, I, would, I would, you know, divide uh, 2023 into like three sections. Continue, stop, start. Okay. In 2024. Yeah. So. What what I think was good, I, I was you know able. It was getting to the normal, you know. Even though like uh, uh, partially business in Czech Republic is not that easy because the GDP is mm -hmm. dropping down, whatever. But that's fine because I do a lot of business abroad, you know, and I invested in artificial intelligence, which which I think is the thing for me. Artificial intelligence, both both like on my personal investment. But how uh, artificial intelligence will involve in you know coaching, especially yes. like you know my athletes and executives and so on. So this is something I need to go you know deeper. But I really you know like it, and I, I started to use it more and more, and that's that's good. But I should you know stop. Okay, I think sometimes I was too much you know involved like mentally with my you know athletes not sleeping you know very well if they were losing whatever and because there are many athletes i've got some you know uh sleepless nights and i i, I want to stop it you know right because it's like i wanted to help them but i i was too close um, to the tennis players and other other you know athletes so i i, I wanted to change it i will still provide professional support but you know Eight hours sleep is priority, right? So I'm going <laughs> yes. to stop. And what, what I will start, uh, there are two things. You know, we uh, finalized my course in, you know, English. It will be uh, called 
human potential accelerator and we will sell it you know worldwide and i have a friend of mine who was doing it with me you know michael uh Kiselica. he is working with robin sharma uh, the guy who wrote the uh monk who sold his ferrari you know his, yes i will get you know some support from them and then our book uh you know the unlocking children potential will be published worldwide in February uh, by, you know, Willie, which is one of the biggest uh, publishing educa with educational literature. So I need to spend, uh, what I'm saying, I need to spend, you know, more time outside of the Czech Republic or like online maybe, but still, you know, doing a lot of stuff like abroad, which, which I think was less, it was, you know, uh, uh, for, the, for the good reasons during the COVID, but now I go in when, in uh april i go to new york i speak at you know new york university and i'll do some you know promo for the book and and so on so i will be more involved about that that's kind of the, in the nutshell but i think it was a good uh it, it was it was not great year i think like 2021 where my athletes were really getting you know the uh the, the medals olympic games and so it was a great year but 2024 it's another olympic you know year oh yeah uh, for i should be the whole olympic games you know the whole like the 17 days or whatever in paris with the the athletes so looking for it so that's in the in the nutshell you know but i have a lot of i have a lot of energy because i lost like 10 kilos which you know I, and i i think i eat now more healthy which i need and yeah it's good you know so it's good it's well, how about, how about well, you? I have to start with, I'm sure there's a lot of people listening to this right now and going, how did you lose 10 kilos? That's, so many people have their New Year's resolution. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be fit. I'm going to join the fitness center. How, wh before I go into mine, how do you do it where you change it from, I have a resolution to I'm really here and I'm making I have a I have a friend. He's a doctor and he's a specialist in stem cells. Okay. Yeah. And he yeah. works with many athletes and executives and so on. So he really built for me and for my wife, the diet we've, we are getting now a little bit more proteins, a little bit less sugar, but we are not starving at all, but we are losing the weight because it's like, he is able to do it like individual. And it really, we didn't have, before that, we didn't have enough proteins and we've got a lot of sugar, obviously, like chocolates and so on. I still do like, you know, dark chocolate, that's fine, but not that much. And I eat five times a day. He's saying that, you know, uh, the, um, uh, how, you, how you call it, fasting is a good thing, but 12, max 14 hours, this is it. You know, you should not go for, you know, especially like if you are, you know, older or whatever and I, I really i i try to do every day like 12 13 hours i eat like six and then the next day i eat usually eight o'clock my breakfast so this is it in a nutshell and i still do a lot of sport obviously but mainly it's much better diet and i yeah. feel much better i i do like what i do now it's like half of my plate is vegetables one quarter it's meat you know usually a lot of fish and one one call is like you know potatoes or rice or whatever you know right so there you go everybody keep it small make small changes fill that a little sense. bit more of your plate with vegetables and already that's enough you don't have to go wild over the top you don't have to cut all sugars out forever it, none of that stuff is sustainable because we're here to talk about making your life the way you want it not just how do i have willpower because willpower will die by week three of january yeah. <laughs> We know this from the statistics about um, resolutions. So for me, I actually do things maybe slightly differently than most other people. Because mm -hmm. normally when we do goal setting, and as Yana said, people say, okay, make a smart goal, make it tangible. No, okay, I, I want to lose weight, but how are you going to do that? You're going to change your diet. You're going to go exercise. You're going to get sleep. You're going to this, this. For me, I start the opposite way. I ask myself questions like, what's the legacy I want to leave? Once I start big and I go, what's the legacy I want to leave? I want to help people. I want to unlock their potential. I'll use your words um, yeah. through coaching, through, you know, helping people get through difficult times. And then I ask myself, so what do I want to do in 2024 that's going to make progress towards that legacy? So might be things like making an online course so I can spread to more people or writing a book so it can spread it to more people, right? 
And I work backwards. And that's how I say, okay, what's my goal setting? Not it's a goal because I want a goal. It's a goal because it's going to get me closer to something that's very important to me. So for those of you who don't know what's your legacy, then 2024, goal number one for you is start making progress and figuring out what's my purpose, what's the thing I want to leave behind. And I'll tell you this, I love this story. Maybe you know it as well, Yen. The Nobel Prize, we know this, the Nobel Prize for peace and literature and all this stuff. Actually, Alfred Nobel, this is a rumor. I don't know if it's true, but he's the guy who invented dynamite. So he is the guy who knew how to blow things up, cause chaos, cause war, cause death. And the rumor is that when his brother died, a French newspaper got it wrong, thought it was Alfred who had died and wrote an obituary talking about what a horrible impact he'd had on humanity. And he read this and he went, oh my God, I don't want that to be the legacy I leave behind. So he said, what can I do to leave a different, better yeah. legacy? And he donated his money to all these prizes to make sure that he could leave for, forever improvement into the world. Yeah. So in 2024, if you don't know what your legacy is, or you don't know what your purpose is, that is your starting point. So I need to I need to pick up, you know, my area for the Nobel Prize, you know, basically. <laughs> <laughs> We're like no, this close, no. this close. <laughs> Uh, Lisa, I, I don't know if we can go, you know, public about what we talk before, you know, the call. Should we? Because it's 2024, you know. <laughs> Let's do yeah. it. Let's put it out there into the world. All right. Okay. Guys, we never, we ne me and Lisa, we never met face to face. We know each other almost like three years. We never, you know, met face to face. But still, we decided to write together a book about, Yay! you know, fitness. We don't know yet, you know, what will be the, the title of the book. We don't know yet how to do it, you know, exactly. But we have a we have a good, you know, thoughts already. Exactly. So that's our, you know, 2024 common project to <laughs> to to get a book, absolutely, to write a book. You've yeah. spilled the beans. Yes, I'm sure everyone's happy. And this is all for you guys. As we said, we want to spread the word out. We want to get more of this out. We appreciate that all of you come and listen to us. And we thought, why don't we put this together in a more lasting format? So again, we're looking at legacies. How do we create? How do we build? How do we make progress and move forward? So now you already know what's going to be on our 2024 list. <laughs> Lisa, I, Lisa and, I mentioned, you know, yeah. energy. Okay. What was, you know, what was the, like, if you talk about the health, you know, what was the major thing which energized you for in this year? You know? What was it? Okay, here we go. It just, I just sneaked it in because it was last week. By the way, for everybody who's watching and listening, I did try to ah, see I know what is week, it. Okay. Right? <laughs> but he was gone. I was in, uh, I was yeah. in Prague. So last week I went to a Wim Hof retreat. And what that yeah. means is Poland. I went into the mountains of Poland. Poland and yeah. I went up uh, Mount uh, Snitschka. Snitschka. Uh -huh. Did I pronounce it's that the, correctly? It's a high Tatras. It's called high Tatras, the, the, the mountains, yeah. Uh, okay. So I went up a mountain, but in my bathing suit. Because the point of a Wim Hof retreat is that you have a winter expedition you get to love cold wim hof is the ice man absolutely and i will tell all of you i know jan and i talk about how we take the cold showers and we're really into sort of the wim hof method but when you go there it is quite extreme so uh, it's, different. <laughs> it's different i will tell all of you my breaking point my uh, opening health point okay was during one of the sessions in an ice bath. So you go into an ice bath. And you sit and all you, together, yeah. You sit all together. We have a group of 20. We go into an ice bath for a couple of minutes, not, not a very long time. But of course, outside air is also freezing levels, right? And then you warm up. You know, Wim Hof has a, has a horse stance that you do to warm up. And then they say, okay, back in the ice. And we're like, oh, okay, great, sounds good. And then we come out again. And then we're trying to warm up and we're warming up. And then they say, guess what? You're going in again. So we're like, oh my God, a third ice bath. We're cold. 
But of course, what do you do? You go, all right, we can do yeah. this. So we get in. And hey, by the way, the third ice bath, you don't feel anything. You're already numb. This is warm. This it's is nice. Important. Yeah. But at the end of this, when I really then went in the building and was trying to warm up, I couldn't. My body was really shutting down. I was shaking yeah. uncontrollably. I thought I was going to pass out and I was having trouble breathing, partially because I was panicking, going, I've yeah. never felt like this. Something is very wrong. Yeah. And my um, my guide stayed with me and she kept saying, just push, just push, keep going through, trust your body. There's a warm, you know, ball inside. Keep uh, trusting that your body will warm up how it needs to keep moving, keep doing the work, but really be in there. Use your imagination and trust it. And I'm going, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I can't do it. She's <laughs> like, trust it. Yes, go. And uh, by the way, I was still shaking, wearing a hat, right, right, so, right. you know, for four hours probably after. But I did. I made it through. Okay. And after that point, my body said, when you hit a, a wall, that's not the point to give up. Nothing's wrong. Trust in your body. And after that, every ice bath we went to, every mountain that we hiked, I was like, I can do this. And my, right. not just in my head, not just mental strength, I can do this. My body said, yeah. it's no yeah. problem. We've got this. There's a, there's a great book, the, the Body Keeps the Score, which is yes. very much where the body and mind are, you know, connected. Absolutely. So, guys, I have, uh, as I as I promised, there is a poll from Forbes, which was run, I think, at the end of uh, uh, November. Okay. A couple of uh, points. 62% of the people feel like there's a pressure to set up some New Year resolution. Okay, so 62%. Women, even 64%, men like 60%. Uh, percent. Uh, while, you know, fitness was, a, you know, uh, not very top uh, last year. It was mental health. This year, for the 2024, it is a, it is a you know, Ooh. fitness. Uh which kind of the applications are people using? 46% are using some applications for the diet programs. Gym membership, 43%. Habit tracking application, 40%. Diet and calorie counters uh, application, 33%. <laughs> and, you know, still uh, uh, there are a lot of fat people <laughs> around the world, you know. <laughs> uh, and meditation, 33%. Now, interesting question. What are top five for the next year? Okay. Yeah. Improve fitness. It's number one. Forty-eight percent of the of the people. It, it will not, uh, you know, uh, be in the total hundred percent because it overlaps, obviously. So forty-eight percent uh, fitness. Okay. Thirty-eight uh, percent improve finances. Okay. Thirty-six mm percent -hmm. improve mental health. Thirty-four percent lose the weight, and thirty-two uh, percent improve diet. Basically, what is what is interesting, you know, uh, that. Uh, uh in in united states there are like uh, 87 percent of the people who would like to have some uh new year resolution while in sweden is between 12 to 14 <laughs> percent they've just given up hope <laughs> they are still sweden you should understand is one of the happiest you know nation okay in the world uh with, together with denmark uh then the last point all, you know, overall, 80% of the respondents feel that they they have an ability to reach the goals, okay? Only 6% like uh, the confidence. But what we know from the previous years, that only 46% of the people will succeed. So 80% believe they will succeed and 46 will succeed in reality. So that's mm -hmm. kind of you know, what, how people think about the <clears throat> uh, New Year resolutions. Yeah. Yeah, what I would add here, Jan, is a lot of people put in a resolution that has the word should in it. Oh, I should lose weight. Oh, I know I should eat more healthy. I so am. for those of you who are listening right now and have a resolution that's a should, get rid of it. If you really want it, get committed to it 
And if it's one of those like, yeah, like, okay, all of us wish we were naturally healthier, but I'm not really going to do anything about it, or it's going to, it's going to feel too hard right now, then get rid of it. Because what happens is people try, they try for a few weeks, they fail, and they let that be a guilt spiral, a shame spiral, they feel worse about it, they go, oh, see, I never works out, so I should never bother dieting, let me eat another chocolate bar, because I feel bad about it. So either I want to and I'm going to, or I'm not. But no yeah. should, maybe, I could, I'm excited for a week. None of that. That's the worst place to be. I agree. Absolutely. So, uh, Lisa, any life-changing books you read this year? Oh, boy. Yeah, I, by the way, everybody, I probably read a book every week to two weeks. So I read a lot of books. I happen to have one really good one right here. <laughs> Funny enough, uh, I tomorrow my friend who was studying with me, I mean, he's since like 40 years ago, he left for the US and he was uh, working for Bill Gates. He's celebrating 60th birthday and we have a big celebration party here in Prague. And he will get from me the Czech edition because it's original Czech an English edition of the book. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so for those who couldn't see it, I'm holding up Jan's book. It's my favorite book, The Positive Leader. Um, what I would say is I've read many life-changing books, yeah. but mm -hmm. actually so much of the time I read either re like beach novels. Those are the things I read before bed because I want nothing in my head or I read very serious analytic business books. And I really loved this book called The 40 Rules of Love. And that's because it's about Rumi and his like just wonderful friendship and how loving and kind and how people can rise above through love and friendships. And it's so far out of what I would call my quote comfort zone. <laughs> right. And for me, it's really important to get back in touch with poetry with philosophy with this feeling of love because coming out of covid man are people fighting a lot with each other oh yeah people i mean things are cutthroat it's polarizing and politics it's tense people were laid off at work like things are hard people are stressed i mean yeah talk about taking on other people's emotions and you staying up at night worrying right this is all i do for my clients and I thought, why are we always focused on what we don't have, what's hard? Why aren't we focused on what really matters, which in the end is actually just love, relationships, connection, being there for each other. So this is the start of my journey into, you know, what some may call the more esoteric side, but away from just all the rational stuff, because right. these rational books are great but they aren't going to hold all the answers for what humans need. And most especially during the time of AI, we're going to have so many people displaced out of jobs, so much uncertainty, so much rapid development. We're not going to know how to handle it. We got to start going back to some really core human elements yeah. and love will be one of them. For me, for this year, I read three times, you know, Power of Now from Eckhart Tolle. Mm -hmm. and every time I reread it, you know, I was able to find something new. Yes. And I, I, and I was fortunate enough, I met him, you know, in Prague. He, he got, you know, some lecture in Prague. It is, is a great guy. He's really putting together all, you know, Eastern philosophies like, you know, Buddhism and whatever, but he's able to explain it in the, you know, way that normal people, ordinary people would, you know, understand, right? And he's really saying it because a lot of people think, including, you know, me, I thought still 10 years ago that intelligence is only when you, you know, talk and you think and so on. But he's saying, like, if you are here and now, if you are just being, you know, there's a lot of intelligence beyond the world, you know, right? Yes. And and this is it. And uh, for example, I, I was today, I coach uh, one of the best, you know, football players in uh, uh, my country, okay? And uh, he got like six uh, months old daughter. And I told him, Tom, if you will follow what your daughter is doing, because kids are absolutely from the nature, they are ready for everything. He said, oh, like, 
at the beginning it's like reflection then the mirror neurons whatever and they are absolutely like they do they know what are their talents so they they do what is giving them you know energy i said if you will watch your child you know you will like slow down and you will feel hey there are more than just the football you know right? yes. <laughs> and, and, and you will play better football and you will still have a great you know relationship with, with your daughter because once you know we try our kids like to to bend a little bit and to you know compare with the other kids that's that's the end basically and yes. uh, there's a lot of you know comparison and now it's even like you know i think parents are getting better step by step but you know we have social networks where you have this comparison and you know unless you have like louis vuitton or whatever you know right it's you are you know <laughs> class citizen and so on and you know if you if you think about it right the 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 the, the way our upbringing is you know happening in the families it's key thing but we are not prepared to be parents you know at all right i mean yes you know when and i was when i was in the school you know girls they learn how to basically take care of you know small baby like physically physically how to you know change the you know napkins whatever right and, and we 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 learn how to work around the garden that was it like there was a preparation for the it was the there was a subject family life preparation for the family life you are wow. really, you are wow. really prepared. that's why i think you know you as a parent you screw a lot of things what is necessary to do to repair it basically but not like apologize only but say hey this is what happened you know i learned a lot and talk to your kid because this is the way how you can develop your kids to be better parents than you, you know, right? Yes. Someone just recommended a book to me. I have to look up the title yeah. because I laughed so hard. I haven't read it yet, but it's called They Fuck You Up. And it's all about how all parents mess up their children. I'm like, can't wait to read it. It's great. 70, Bruce Lipton is one of the best scientists in, you know, epigenetics. He's saying that 70% of the programs which are in our, you know, brains, provided by our parents are dangerous for the kids you know? great i hope my eight and ten year old are sleeping soundly in their rooms <laughs> um by the way i do want to answer your book question with mm -hmm. what was the best healthy like book related to health that i read okay. since we're on right. health care yeah. and the i can recommend it so much it's called breath by james nestor i think it came okay. out a couple of years ago during covid and my god for everybody who's listening if you don't want to eat healthier and sleep better and all that good stuff, all you have to do is breathe differently. So what I'm going to tell you is never breathe through your mouth. Always breathe through your nose in and out, and you will already lower your inflammation, help yourself to get more restorative sleep. You should tape your mouth if you sleep with your mouth open at night or you aren't sure or if you find yourself snoring, you haven't tried that. And also, you know, make sure you get a lot of fresh air. Make sure when you're in meeting rooms all day, this is like terrifying. If you ever have a CO2 meter, carbon dioxide is what we breathe out. Yeah. If you ever have a CO2 meter in a meeting room, you're like 20, 30 minutes in, 480 microns is what would be good. I rarely see it below 800 in an office. You can be in a meeting for 20 minutes. You're already at 1200. So 480 should be good. You're already at 1200. At that stage, your brain is working at, you know, the, the test, show, uh, you know, the studies show that if you were taking a test, you'll do 50% worse than if you're in a place that has much more oxygen, because what you're breathing in is not enough oxygen. Yeah, oxygen. And we sit in our meeting rooms all day long and we don't even realize that we're barely breathing. And then most of the time, their, their research shows 99% of people breathe incorrectly. Probably means you and I, right? <laughs> that sometimes we're breathing in through the mouth, especially during sport, et cetera. If you can breathe through your nose, if you can figure out how much of your life is changed by your breath, not even just meditating, just everyday breathing, that will have the easiest health impact uh, yeah. for everyone going forward and, and you know it's if, if you speak you know like if you do some presentation you need to breathe by mouth there are situations when you know okay, you need of to course <laughs> but for example if i if i run fast i need to breathe by through the mouth for sure 
But if I run like, you know, slow pace, I can still do the nose breathing. And if I go, like if I walk, I, I always do. And I, But you need to be really concentrated because other, otherwise it's not, you know, for some people it's not, for me it's quite natural, you know, but for some people it's not. I tell you what, if, for example, I, I, I have a cold, okay, then you are breathing my mouth and then you feel like, you know, uh, uh, you, you have a, you know, you are thirsty during the yes. night. Yes, it dehydrates you. My nose, and if you are being by nose, it's much healthier. Then if, if we are in, if we are, it's not connecting to the breathing, but what I do, not, not every day, but now, for example, because there is a lot of, you know, uh, there are people with the cold, whatever, you know, right? So what I do in the morning and in the evening, I have a sea salt. I put it in the water and I have some, you know, special device and it goes like that, you know. So I, I, you really, you are able, and it's, it's, at the beginning, it's quite tough to do it, but then it's super and it's super easy, you know, to do Yes. It. And for everyone who's listening, sometimes it can feel hard, like, oh, it's the holidays. I don't want to give up a piece of cake. Sometimes things like, okay, rinsing your nose out with salt water and actually breathing through your nose might even have the same or better health benefits. So don't, you know, if you're really interested in health, don't be limited to, oh, it means I have to run three times a week. Or there are other really small key things that you can do. So I think for health, you know, again, when you say, oh, I'm going to set a resolution, I should lose weight. Don't think in that same limited way. Think about what you can add into your life or how you can encourage health, not just, oh, I want to look good in a bikini for the summer. I mean, don't yeah. we all, but. <laughs> Maybe we, we should spend, you know, a couple of minutes talking about how to set up, you know, those New Year's resolutions or the, the goals or whatever, you know, right? Uh, what we know from the science, there is a there is a one hormone which is key in your ability to reach the goal or not reach the goal, and uh, the hormone is called dopamine. Dopamine is reward hormone, but dopamine is also motivational hormone. Okay. Yes. But what we know, there is a great you know lady from New York University, uh, Emily Balchedis. She spent like twenty years uh, studying motivation. And what she figured out, for example, if you would say in the new year, as uh, Lisa rightly said, I'll go to, you know, fitness like every three times a week. Okay. One week, two weeks, maybe three weeks, and then you are gone. Because your brain, if it's like the, the goal, I want to lose the weight or I want to have more, you know, muscles or whatever, that doesn't work like that because your brain, they studied that. And your brain, once you will like start to, you know, visualize it your brain will not see any, any excitement in it and you will give up okay yeah. so you need to have like the the whole goal for the whole year or half of the year or whatever and then you need to have a process goals really like day by day every day i do something small and that that's when the dopamine is released and dopamine is like telling you okay it's good i finished something i did something today but I'm also motivated to continue for tomorrow and for the next week or, or right. Then uh, you you send me, Lisa, some sheet on how to, you know, plan the, the week. Maybe you want to talk about it because it's really oh, good. Yeah. It's really good because we our brain likes to plan in a week, basically. You can, I'm always like putting there three months ahead, whatever. But like every week on Sunday, I know exactly what I will do that that we I mean there are obviously some you know gaps for emergency whatever but more or less I know the week up front what I'm going to do so maybe you know you yes. you want to spend a little bit time on this in order for me to do that I have to take one step back and maybe I'll just keep answering books I loved that I read this right, year sure. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. There is something uh, that, that we're going to talk through that came uh, from the idea of the book 4,000 Weeks. So mm -hmm. what is 4,000 Weeks? This is very scary, folks. This is the amount of weeks that you're going to have in your life. Okay. So if you do the math, if you live to like around 80, you only have 4,000 weeks. And I don't want to tell you how old I am, but let's just say I've hit the halfway point. <laughs> And so I only have 2,000 weeks left, right? And so when you think of it that way, okay, it's very easy to say like to live every day like it's your last. But there are some days where you just do four loads of laundry and it's not that exciting. Fine. But by week, you should really aim, was there something meaningful, memorable about this week? 
because I want you to keep in mind, you don't have very many. And for me, just like Jan said, I like to play this little game for myself where I go, oh my God, I, I, I have to do something for this week or I don't have a, a, so many weeks left. The reason that you put a limiting number on it is because it produces a little bit of that stress in you and it gives you enough of that motivation to move forward. How many times, I mean, you live near something like in your hometown and you say, oh, I'm like, I'll go visit that castle one day and you'll never get there because it's, I could go anytime. There's no urgency. There's no need for action. And so we just say, yeah, tomorrow, another day, next year, sometime. So we need to have a sense of urgency. 4,000 weeks tells you, hey, life is short. So by week, then you start to say, okay, so what are my major goals? What's that legacy? The important stuff, not just the urgent stuff of getting to work and doing your to-do list and making sure the laundry is done. And, but what are the big picture things that you want to make sure? And then what do you want to happen with your week? My husband and I will literally sit down next year, 2024. It's our new commitment. And every week we will write down what, what did we do that was memorable or exciting or like great about that week. And then we, you know, for this weekly planning, you check in every day. What are the habits? Did I drink the, you know, two, yeah. three things of water that I wanted to do yeah. every day? And then you look at your calendar. So you don't just go, okay, what are the things that came up? I have a meeting here. I got to pick up dry cleaning here. That's too easy to let life pass you by. Instead, your weekly planner should also include those habits that you want to keep up, those big picture, important goals that you want to make progress towards. Exactly. And Lisa mentioned one key word, legacy. You know, right? I talk, I talk rather about the meaning in your life, but it's almost same. It's the same thing. Absolutely. Now, what we know from the science, you know, more if if your goal are more aligned to your meaning or to your legacy you do it easier i tell you why because you like what you do basically and that's when another great hormone called endorphin is released you are very often in the flow and you are making huge progress number one your willpower will not i mean willpower is dropping down through you know the day uh, based on how many you know tough decisions you are doing but if you do things which you really like you are inspired by this activity you have an emotional connection to what you do you know there is a slowdown in your you know willpower like dropping down right so that's what that's what we know so it is really you know important to align those you know goals and what you do to your overall you know meaning in your life or in your legacy and i think this tool with those four thousand weeks it's really great that you, you see you know like what you do what is what is the progress you know right and you feel good because the other thing is that your amygdala unfortunately our brain doesn't work like hey i want to recognize you for the great success whatever you did you know no you need to understand your you know how your brain works okay amygdala the the the, the, the fastest part of the brain talks only about survival so you you remember only the worst last worst experience that's what you remember the most okay because th this is the most dangerous thing right and you your you know logical part of the brain needs to challenge it and there is a one thing which is a uh, act of gratitude so maybe i'll say what is the act of the gratitude and uh, and yes. i and then i'll ask you what are you grateful for for last year okay yeah great so, what we know again from the research from psychology if people every day would say three things you know would remind themselves three things they are grateful for what happened that day it can be small thing maybe i walked the dog and dog was you know happy whatever you know right you are grateful for then you know it's changing the structure of your brain and it's it's strengthening your logical part of the brain and your you know amygdala is like cooling down because you feel good you know right so uh, this is it because the the whole world. I mean, don't watch. I mean, make sure that you are aware of what's going on around the world, but don't watch the news because it's not. Nice. Do it. First of all, it's not all fact, you know, and they are picking up all you know negative experiences. It was COVID. Now it's the world. We have two wars now, more or less, you know, right? And I know it's tough, but there are so many good things happening around the world. 
So if you concentrate on those, you know, I think uh, th this is also bringing more, you know, understanding among the people. Anyway, so Lisa, what yes. you are mostly grateful for for the uh, last year? <laughs> I always start with the people who I love, who are supportive around me. And the reason that I'm really, and I really, you can ask my husband every day. I'm like, thank you. I, I still, we've been married 12 years. I still say, thank you for loading the dishwasher because I really, truly appreciate it. And I like to share my appreciation. But the reason that I start with the- Now, I, now I know what I need to do. So my wife, you know, will be nice to me. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not doing well, it. Well, there you go. You got to find out her love language, though. My love language is acts of service. When my husband folds the laundry, I'm like, you are the greatest husband That's, the, the, that's the Swiss way. That's the Swiss way. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> But it's true. It's so important to appreciate who you have. And I have to tell everything that I can do, I can take a risk with my career. I can go on crazy adventures like hiking mountains. The reason I can do that is because I always have a safety net, which is I know I have people who love me no matter what unconditionally. That is the starting point for everything else great in my life. So if I don't focus on that, nurture that, appreciate that, and show them that. Not just, oh, I appreciate it, and then I'm a jerk to them all day, right? Yeah, yeah. And with my daughters, we do an appreciation moment every night before bed. What are you grateful for today? What are you learning today? Because Excellent. this is important. I will sometimes say it when we got food. When Every time we walk upstairs, my daughters go, oh, I don't want to walk upstairs. Can't we take the elevator? I'm like, are you joking? We have two legs, and they both work. We get to take the stairs. Like, amazing and if you have that level of appreciation and gratitude for everything that you have i mean the hard stuff comes but it's not that hard because you go okay you know i don't have this but i mean thank god this is important stuff that matters i do have and i just want to end this here before i ask you the reason that we talked about this subject here today how to design a better life for 2024 is whatever you're grateful for find it tell them and notice what you have in your life and if there are things in your life which you are not grateful for like you hate you know your job or you don't like the relationship that you have or i don't know you hate your car or whatever then start there if you notice i'm really not grateful for this then i would say love it change it or leave it absolutely so, so this is where gratitude is not only a great practice to give you in, in into the right mindset but also to let you know as you actively design your life if it's not making you happy change it don't just sit there and take it and be a victim and say oh everything's hard love it change it or leave it <laughs> yeah and what are you grateful for in 2023 2024 i will i will start with the kind of the said you know news i lost my mother my father died like nine years ago and i lost my mother in in march okay but what i realized you know uh my the, the way I, the way i'm like learning I, I will obviously i'm you know uh emotional guys everybody else so we are like crying whatever but the way i try to cope with that you know trauma if you will uh I try always to remember some, you know, story, some experience with, you know, my parents, right? And my mom was a teacher, so <laughs> there are there are a lot of good things with the teachers, and there are some. <laughs> your mom is a teacher, you, <laughs> you know, you, and you are in the village. You you are like, oh, you should be, you know, you should be the good example for the other kids, which I was not, obviously. You know, not. <laughs> right, but. Uh, and so I'm really grateful for my parents, and I was always grateful. But now, uh, when I lost both of them, I'm, I realize how much grateful I am, who I am, you know, right? Yeah. And uh, there are, you know, some challenging parts of my character because of that, you know, upbringing. But majority of that, I think it's good, you know, right? So uh, uh, this is it. So, I, yeah, I'm grateful for... Uh, my parents and I'm grateful who I am and and you 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 said that you like unconditionally the other people I think first you know it, that's great I'm, I'm doing the same thing but first of all 
you need to like un unconditionally yourself. Yeah. You know? Whatever. Yes. Whatever is happening, you know, right? And 20 years ago, that was not the case with Jan. I was like, I was too tough with me when I was not successful. I was like not sleeping and stuff like that. Now it's like, that's why those couple of, you know, uh, examples I use with the athletes, I said, no, no, no. It, I wanted to stay, work with them, but stay a little bit, you know, outside. Yes. And, you know, they are on their own. Yes. Because that's, that's life. And, and then, uh, uh then I have a one tool which I would recommend you. The guy who is a friend of mine, who was for a very long time number 12, you know, uh, in ATP uh, ranking in tennis, uh, uh, Dominic Herbati. Basically, he told me, Jan, when I was not playing, you know, very well, when it, when it really sucks, you know, right? Sucks. That, then I was having, you know, keyword enjoy, okay? Enjoy my life, enjoy my family, because there are so many things around you which you should be grateful for, you know. That shit is happening always. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? Uh, that, that's for sure. But there are so many things we should be grateful for. So, yeah. That's, yes. Uh, this I, is I it. totally agree. And, Jan, I'm just realizing we're 45 minutes into this, and I have not yet given people a specific <laughs> formula. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I want to just make sure that we get it out, what we promised people they would get. Yeah. How to design this better life for 2024. So we did talk about not just setting this goal and saying, oh, I should do that. I should lose weight. Instead, starting with that self-awareness. What's my greater purpose in life? What's the, what's the important, not the day-to-day -day urgent junk? How do I rise above? And we said, hey, if you don't know that for 2024, that's number one on your list for things to figure out. The more self-awareness you have, the more you're going to be driven in a meaningful direction. And so it's going to be once you get the clarity, it's much easier to commit. And the way that I make progress, I sort of have little buckets and we've touched some of them because gratitude is a really important yeah. one for me. Like we just need to make sure we're actually enjoying life. Hey, you can suffer through life or you can enjoy it. Yeah. Either way, the same shit's going to happen to you. <laughs> Um, but I actually really focus in a couple of key categories besides love and family and all the stuff that everybody sort of knows. For me, I always prioritize some layer of healing. Mm -hmm. So the, the world is hard. Th things are hard. The news is hard. We're taking on other people's emotions. Our childhoods were hard. There's a lot of hard stuff that we have to constantly deal with. But every year I like to heal a little bit of a layer of hard so that I can be more flexible, more open, uh, more loving. And so every year I commit to doing something that's going to heal within me physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Right. So, and next year, this is going to sound a little weird, Next year, my healing is to take Krav Maga class, uh, classes. Why? For anyone who doesn't know, this is like an Israeli, basically like street defense course. Um, but now, what I, oh, sorry, Lisa. Yeah. Many people like the bodyguards and all, you know, commandos are trained on that. I was, yes. you know, I was having some engagement with the international organization like on the mental you know toughness i was training them for the men no not on craft maga i'm not in that but on the on the mental toughness how to be in the flow and it's it's quite it's quite it is getting very very popular yes and the yeah. reason that i realized that is subconsciously i'm a woman uh I'm, I'm a bit short i was always the youngest one in the class youngest one in the family so i have this feeling of like i'm smaller i'm physically weaker now I can, you know, speak with people very easily. I can be quite commanding with my voice, but with my body, I feel a little nervous sometimes. So I notice sometimes when there's someone who is very dominating physically, right. I will shrink back. Okay. And my body will react. And it's not a conscious thing. I'm not actually scared. I don't think someone's gonna, you know, punch me in a business mm -hmm. meeting or so. Yeah. But something the body keeps the score, something in the body knows. So I thought, ah, oh, as part of my healing, I need to feel, not that I'm going to use it on anybody, but I need to feel that I'm physically capable yeah, yeah. as well. For the feeling. 
Exactly. For the psychology of, I don't need to feel I need, I should shrink or hide that I could really stand yeah. strong in my presence. So for those of you who are listening, healing doesn't always mean you have to go to therapy and you have yeah. to work through your childhood. It can mean very many different things. I don't know, Jan, is there anything that you have in mind for any kind of healing for 2024? Or are you already healed up? You're good. No. <laughs> well, yeah, I, what, what I, I do a lot of, I have like, you know, devices like, you know, for especially special, you know, devices for the massage of my, you know, legs, you know, the uh, right. Mm -hmm. And we will build because unfortunately we have a whirlpool, but it's gone now. So I want to, you know, build in a much better whirlpool in in our, you know, bathroom. That's another, you know, for, so the, for the for the healing. Uh, and uh, and I wanted to do because uh, I do a lot of, you know, mindfulness, but I, I wanted to do like, you know, course like special, you know. Uh, course on the on the meditation with with somebody like John kabat -Zinn, probably online you know right but uh, yeah. he's a great guy so I see more and more I, I was like training the European Commission on mindfulness I'm like practitioner but I would like to learn more like on official course more you know like you know different techniques and how how other people are doing it absolutely and see you've just crossed another threshold so there's healing for yourself. And then yeah. there's also now I can heal for myself, but I can also take that to my legacy to give to others again, oh. to give more courses. And also another bucket that I think everybody needs to have is your growth. Yeah. So you say, okay, I go to a course I learn. For everybody, there should be something in your 2024 that is about growth. Now, again, it doesn't mean you have to pick up a book, you have to take a course. Everybody thinks so traditionally. Growth can be you travel to a new country, you try skydiving for the first time, exactly. something that's going to push you out of the comfort zone. Because the body loves comfort, loves doing what it's always been yeah. doing. I, come on, I live in Switzerland. When people go on holidays, they go to the same place, to the same hotel, to eat the same food every year for 30 years. And that's their thing. They know it, they like it. Done. But we need to have some growth, some adventure. And my recommendation is for 2024 and beyond, if you don't already have one, you all who are listening better make a bucket list. What are those crazy, wild things that you want to do in your lifetime? Again, you only have 4,000 weeks. It's not yeah. that many weeks. <laughs> and once you start to create your bucket list, then you can take a step to make progress. So for example, over these Christmas holidays, I have always wanted to see the Northern Lights. So this year we'll fly to New York and on the way back from New York, we'll go to Iceland. Now who knows what's gonna be in Iceland because there's a volcano erupting at the moment. But the hope and the plan is we see the Northern Lights so that I can say I started 2024, check, bucket list item. So you have to have a little awareness. What would I put on my list? Do you want to learn how to go scuba diving? Do you want to hike Kilimanjaro? Do you want to learn to play the piano? Make a list because that's how you can start to make your 2024 goals interesting. Don't say, I want to lose weight and get healthy. Say, I want to hike Kilimanjaro. I better start hiking to get in shape. Then you will show up. When you, when you mention Iceland, you know, Last yeah. earthquake, I was, I think it was 2011. I spent additional week in the U.S. in Seattle because oh, you know we you couldn't, couldn't fly over. And it was funny. It, it was funny what happened. Our colleagues, we were like a couple of Europeans, you know, staying in Seattle, and our colleagues who were living, American colleagues living in Seattle. Every evening, we went to the different family, okay, for <laughs> dinner, and they were like, "Don't move." If you need to stay there, you will start new family here in the US. <laughs> it was so crazy that we were thinking to go by boat like for five days, you know, really. Was that, and then I, I think I spent there like I was back on Thursday. And But Friday, the last, you know, uh, the last flight, I missed the last flight by half an hour. And I, I, I took another, you know, flight like three hours and that was canceled already. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it was yes. Yes, I hope this year doesn't happen. In Europe, you could not fly, basically. 
Yeah, so for like there? a week or two, right? There's yeah, so yeah. much um, ash in the air from yeah. the volcanic eruption. So fingers crossed that Iceland works out. Uh, it should be okay. Um, and the only other thing that I would add here, and then I'll circle back to your bucket list, um, but I want to make sure I close it out yeah. strong for everybody. The other thing you need to make sure of that you do in 2024, and Jan kind of started our whole presentation with this today, is what do you need to stop? You guys need, your calendar's full. I get it, you're busy. You don't have time to take on learning how to go ice skating because your current calendar is not aligned with the life you wanna have. So what are you gonna get rid of? You can delete Instagram. You will have at least 20 hours a week free. <laughs> you know, you can say no to more things. You can work a little bit less. You can find the ways that you can start to get rid of the stuff that is not important. Guess what? I don't do I do laundry on the weekends and not during the week and it's fine. Instead of going, oh, every night, oh, I have a household chore, I have a household chore, I bulk them on the weekends, you know, take a couple hours, but then I'm free in the evenings to actually do stuff that I want to or that I'm interested in doing instead of feeling every day is a chore. So this is the way that I can start to get rid of some busyness and make room in my life. And you have to say no to things in order to say yes to these more important things. Yeah, then I, I would say that for... For those, you know, uh, uh, New Year resolutions or the, the goals for 2024, you need a discipline. And to me, discipline is really your ability to carry out the task even after, you know, the initial excitement is like gone, you know, right? because you are always excited. Yeah, this is great. But then, you know, the willpower goes down. And that that's when it's important to really figure out, hey, this is, you know, uh, very close to my meaning in my life, to my legacy, you know, right? And you you need to get this, you know, dopamine uh, so that you, you continue to do it. Okay. Then, uh, obviously, it's good to have always, like, health goals on, on your health, career, and on the personal development family, you know, right? So that's, uh, that, that's another thing. Uh, to me, what we are not doing enough as a human beings, our brain likes very much progress. This is all about the, you know, growth mindset. So you need to celebrate progress. And even though it's small progress, or maybe sometimes it's failure, you still need to learn from that and, you know, move on. So celebration is important. Then how you measure it, it's like smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. You know, that's, that's kind of the idea. The one piece which we did not, you know, cover is your support, whether it's family, friends, and your mm -hmm. accountability partner. So make yeah. sure whether it's your husband or your wife or, you know, significant other, doesn't matter, or friends, doesn't matter. Accountability partner, that person will remind you, hey, this is it, what we agree, and review it with you. It's really like, you know, right? Because you know what? I was like wondering whether we should, go public about the book or not then i said no if we agreed already last time we go public and then we need to do it that's, uh, that's exactly how, uh, under, the, uh, under the under the pressure right so this is this is important and then uh, the last point is really make sure that you visualize like every day how the success looks like right at the end you know right because it's <clears throat> it is important to, to visualize like do the Total visualization, hey, maybe I, when I will learn, you know, English or whatever, I will be able to watch, you know, some movies and, and so on at the end of this year. And then do the process visualization. It is the same like with setting up the goals. It's the same thing with the dopamine. So if, if you do it, that's, you know, uh, great. And then, you know, like almost every day do kind of this self-reflection. What was good? What, what, what do you think was not good, right? Because I, I think you need to do some review and some adjustments to your, you know, goals, right? And, and yeah, th this is it. So, um, and, you know, Rome, remember, Rome was not built in one day. So, it's really step by step. And you need to, like, every brick you are putting there, almost every brick, you need to celebrate and realize, hey, I'm building something much, much, you know, bigger. And, yeah, th this is it. Because I... You know what I admire? My athletes, they are like preparing themselves for four years, for Olympics, four years. 
and sometimes it's like two minutes and it's gone, you know, the whole exactly. thing. So <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, a really, that's a really tough, you know, that's, that's, a, that, that's a really tough one. Yeah. Yes. Oh. That is how we can close out our 2023, yeah, exactly. grateful, celebrating all that we've created. My number one value, by the way, in life is freedom. So I spent a lot of 2023 building up freedom for my business, for my yeah. husband's business, for the kids, so that we can be really open to taking new adventures, traveling more, and be just generally being able to do more things rather than spending a lot of time working. So 2023, I'm very happy to celebrate, has gotten me one step closer to living a life that's full of freedom and flexibility. Absolutely. So guys, uh, all the best, you know, uh, happy new year and have a nice uh, holiday season, you know, and we we'll see you yeah. after new year, you know. Exactly. Merry Christmas. Happy new year. Happy 2024. Bye-bye. <laughs>